Aloha my kako. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about, actually I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to show you. Take a look at this. Yes, you probably guessed it, we're going to talk about worms in this video. Of course, you were just looking at an earthworm, and we're all familiar with the earthworms that we can find in our gardens. But in this video, I'll talk to you about worms that live on our reefs and in our near shore waters. In the past, I told you my videos would cover the following invertebrate phyla. Nidarians, mollusks, arthropods, annelids, echinoderms, and peripherans. But today, because I'd like to talk about worms, I'm going to add a phylum to this list that not many people know about, but constitutes some of the most spectacular animals on our reefs. I'm going to add the phylum Platyhelminthes, the flatworms. Now, marine worms are hard to find because most of them spend their lives hiding in mud or sandy substrate or hiding in the rocks and crevices of our coral reefs. Let's start with talking about the annelid worms, the ringed or segmented worms. The annelids we'll talk about are part of a group of worms called polychaetes. So what are the annelids? The name annelids means little rings. They are bilaterally symmetrical, they have long tube-like bodies divided into ring-like segments. They have no skeletal structure. Some may have large bristles or paddle-like appendages. When I give tours to school groups at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology on Moku Oloe, sometimes called Coconut Island, there's one animal on the touch table that causes a lot of oohs and ahs. And that animal is the feather duster worm. Take a look at this amazing animal. The feather duster worm is what we call a sabellid worm or a tube worm because it constructs a very strong tube that it can protect it from predators. The feathers on the feather duster worm are used for feeding and breathing. There are other worms on our reefs and near shore waters, but it takes a keen eye to find them. One of the worms that's easiest to find is the spaghetti worm. It's pretty obvious why it's called the spaghetti worm. In this time-lapse video, you can see the spaghetti worm extend their long tentacles out from their bodies to feed. Let me show you one more annelid before I move into the flatworms. That worm is the fireworm, and you don't want to touch the fireworm. Fireworms are common in waters of Hawaii. Fireworms are the centipedes of the sea, and its long and skinny features definitely resemble a centipede. They live on reefs and in tide pools, and they normally come out at night, and they can be two to three inches long. The sting from a fireworm is very painful, so if you were to pick it up, the bristles would stick to you and break off. Each of those bristles can excrete a neurotoxin, a nerve poison, which is both very painful and can leave you feeling nauseous. Now let's discuss the flatworms, Phylum platyhelminthes. Flatworms may be more frequently mistaken for nudibranchs than any other animal. Some of the flatworms are brilliantly colored and many have folds of the body margin. Rarely seen in the open, flatworms live on undersurfaces of rocks or in crevices of tide pools and on the reef. They must be handled with extreme care as their thin bodies easily tear. Flatworms may only reach one to two inches in length, but are voracious hunters and scavengers on the reefs. Most feed on smaller worms, snails, or bivalves, and sometimes on small nudibranchs. They locate prey using chemical sensors at the head end of the body, either special sensory patches or folds along the front edge of the body, 
and tiny antenna-like projections just behind the edge. Now for something really gross. The marine flatworms subdue prey by wrapping their body around it, pumping digestive enzymes into the prey. Once the flesh of the prey is pre-digested and liquefied, it is pumped into the gut of the flatworm for further digestion and distribution. Yuck. I've just barely touched on the fascinating animals that make up the phylum Atlida and the phylum Platyhelminthes. The book, Hawaii Sea Creatures, is a great reference for all of Hawaii's marine invertebrates, and I've talked about that before. Also, the next time you go snorkeling or a tide pooling near shore Hawaiian waters, look for worms. But remember, these are not as easy to spot as some of the other invertebrates I've talked about. And remember, don't touch a fireworm if you find one. It does sting. Finally, I'd like to give another shout out to Kaoki and Yuko Stender for giving me permission to use certain vertebrate photos. Again, if you want to see beautiful photographs from ocean environments all around the globe, please visit their website, marinelifephotography.com. Now for something else. Before I sign off, I want you to know something about the aquarium trade and what it does to our marine environment, especially the world's coral reefs and Hawaii's coral reefs. Our own state government does a very poor job of policing the fish and invertebrates taken from our reefs and sent around the globe to populate marine aquaria. But did you know that the aquarium trade is damaging some of the world's most diverse and spectacular reefs in places like Bali, Indonesia, and the Philippines? In these places, they're not only taking fish, but removing enormous numbers of invertebrates, especially the feather duster worm. The world's reefs will have a very difficult time surviving if we continue to allow the aquarium trade to indiscriminately take animals from coral reefs to satisfy the greed of a few people. Unfortunately, on that sad note, mahalo mai kakou, e kupa'a me ka aloha i ka'ai.